Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Biri. I'm a postdoc at CSIRO. I am, I'm working in hyperspectral reflectance, leaf reflectance, to measure photosynthetic traits in wheat. Um, here, do we have a pointer? Ah, just in front of sorry. Um, uh, here, uh, in this picture, we have a very slow machine to measure, that measures gas exchange, like it was mentioned before, that is very laborious and yet takes time to measure. Uh, but we use it to measure photosynthesis in leaves of wheat, for example. Here is the leaf clip of the um, hyperspectral reflectance that is quicker. And here is this pad that is a tool that measures it's a surrogate for chlorophyll's content. That is kind of my dream for hyperspectral reflectance. Um, well, first, uh, the context is that uh, the world population is increasing, so we need to increase um, uh, the, staple well, the staple crops because there's a lot of demand of basic com commodities. Um, one basic crop is wheat. So the yield of, of wheat has been increasing. Um, here in this plot, we have the years, and here's the yield. And here is just the plot that shows how the farm yield is increasing. That is increasing. And in the top, we have the potential yield. So what means that the farms um, cannot be exactly the best management in the world, but the potential yield means that if the, crop, the crop is growing with the best conditions, the best management. And here is where I think that science needs to improve this yield because it's getting a plateau. Farmers still can reach the, fill the gap, but we need to do more for science. So one way to calculate har uh, yield is with harvest index and biomass, and biomass is related with radiation use efficiency and light interception. But in the plants, in this case wheat, everything is important. We have the spikes, that the spike fertility is very important. The roots, uh, as was mentioned before, for lodging, for water, they are important. Light inter interception, early vigor, get out quick in the field and start growing quick is very important. Other factor that is very important is photosynthesis. So I'm working in this area, in the CO2 fixation, because it's what biomass is getting uh, in the crop to get into the grain. So how can we explode this trait? we can find it probably in just natural variation. But how can we measure photosynthetic traits in a lot of plants? Well, one way to measure photosynthesis is with gas exchange. This is the chamber of the Lycro 6400. Uh, usually we clap the lip and then there's light and we can assess the CO2 that come in and come out, so that difference we help, that help us to calculate how much CO2, Rubisco, that is the main enzyme for photosynthesis, is using in each plant. Uh, this method is, is good, it has been widely used, but it's slow. Um, to get uh, more photosynthetic capacity, not just one point, um, Usually we make an ACA curve, which means is measure different concentrations of CO2, increasing concentrations. Uh, if we give a little bit of CO2 to the plant, it will take very little. Here's the assimilation of the CO2. So as we increase the CO2 in the plant, the plant is getting more. In the first part is Rubisco. Is Rubisco will be kind of eating that CO2. But then it reached like a plateau in a certain way. And the next limitation is J, that we call the electron transport rate. That is the light. Photosynthesis, the important things are Rubisco with the CO2, the light, that it will be the electron transport rate with the water. 
Um, before has been measured just one point photosynthesis. However, this changed a lot with the stomatal conductance. So when we go to the field and we measure if the stomatas are a bit close or a bit open because a cloud pass, uh, it can be variable. So these traits we consider that are more robust and can uh, represent photosynthetic capacity. Um, this is a plot showing the relationship of nitrogen and VC max that represent Rubisco. So usually we think more nitrogen, we will get a uh, higher Rubisco. And in certain way it is, in mainly in the low levels of nitrogen, you feel, you see an increase. However, when you arrive in a top level, you can see quite a spread and diversity on this. So we are also interested on the tech these plants, but we need a tool faster that helps us to measure and assess photosynthesis in the field. So one solution that we found was hyperspectral reflectance. Uh, in this case, I've been using the ESD field spec that go from 350 to 2500 nanometers. And here is a diagram, so usually you, we have the light that is reflected by the leaf and get it into the fiber optic. This sensor gives you all the spectra from the 350 to 2500 nanometers. So before, it has been applied um, a reflectance with partial least square regression to predict here in the X axis are the predicted values of VC max and J for aspen trees and correlate well with the observed data. It has been tried in aspen tree and soybean. So we thought why we cannot do this in wheat. So I had the hard work to go to the field and measure um, nitrogen, sample nitrogen, because um, nitrogen we are very interested in that efficiency of photosynthesis. Um, and leaf mass per area that are destructive traits. VC max and J that represent photosynthesis. SPAT because I like the tool that is quick. Probably not super accurate, but is light and quick. And efficiency, Rubis copper nitrogen. So for this, um, we measure in four experiments. The first one, uh, a set of 16 genotypes in the glass house. We try to give a uh, nitrogen level just to have a huge variation of nitrogen, different colors for reflectance. The next experiment, it was other collection of genotypes with different also levels of nitrogen, but less strong than like from, this, from the first because we wanted to see if the reflectance could see subtle uh, differences. Um, then uh, we wanted to see that in the field. So in Mexico, I went to Mexico in a collaboration with CIMIT, and we measured other set of genotypes for high yield potential. And uh, we measure before anthesis and after anthesis. And the last experiment was in Australia in the field using all other three, well, all the three set of genotypes. So we had a lot of data. And what we did, uh, this is an example for VC Max, is take all the half of the observed data and we run a partial least square regression, just statistics, <laughs> and then correlate with each point of the spectra. Uh, we chop just the first bit and start in 400 to 2400 nanometers. And then we generate the models for each trait. Um, and that will be the ones that we will use to uh, predict each trait. Um, so this is the results. Uh, we got um, here, well, these are the plots, and I got it in the table. I like more tables, so there's some more visuals. Um, so here are the, the traits, the number of training and validation data, and the R squares. So the better was the nitrogen and LMA, 
and photosynthetic rates were lower, but we were really happy with those values, mainly for the time that gas exchange take, takes, that is about 20 minutes, and reflectance will take you uh, just some 30 seconds. Um, so after that, uh, we have been applying these uh, measurements, and it's amazing because now we are able to measure through a stage. So this is another experiment um, that we measure some genotypes with floppy and erect canopies in the field. And we were able to track the traits through time and see in which point of phenology we can find more differences. So we did that in all the traits. So it's one example of the application. Other um, is well, this is just a spread an example from nitrogen and BC max, um, different collection, and these are also some populations, reels, that we are working on too. Uh, and as you can see, there's a spread and there's diversity. So we are happy with this tool because that allows us to select a lot of genotypes and have tails. And then uh, I've been using a spot like um, control and all the time, so I'm being able, well, it, as you see in general, this prediction of the spot and observe um, is quite similar. So we are happy with that. Um, so it has been really good. We have, have some collaborators and colleagues. So always I receive the question, can you predict the traits for me? So it was that a hard work for me go each time to my scripts and try to predict the trades. So um, one idea that we had is to develop a website. Uh, so here, just as the CSV file that you get from the uh, spectral radiometer, you can just upload in the website and get the trades. So this has been a relief for me, <laughs> and, uh, but very useful. And now um, a few colleagues are using this, and I'm glad to know. So in general, there are some advantages from this technique, and is that with just one measurement, we can have a lot of traits, what I really like. It's non-destructive, it's quicker than the conventional methods, and data are available quick. Like if you want to select genotypes during the same field season, you can do it. You don't need to wait for the lab that measure the nitrogen and uh, all the process. Um, however, also it's not perfect yet, and it's to be improved. So my dream in certain way is have a simple tool, simple complex tool, uh, but that lighter to carry in the field is still, for example, now I'm still trying the pram of my daughter to carry the ASD <laughs> because it's, it's heavy sometimes when you try to measure a lot. Um, something light and quicker will be, will be good. Um, calibrations probably I still will try trying better and get better the models, uh, mainly for photosynthesis. Um, I also would like, like more traits, why not? One measurement that give you also phosphorus, cellulose, carotens, water content, carbon isotopes, I don't know. So other things that uh, try and train. Um, the website definitely needs work and talking about collaborations, software engineers or so somebody else that know more than me in this sense to do it. And obviously, um, a scale up to canopy. Uh, leaf is good, I'm happy with that, but it's good always to go up. And yeah, that's the cameras that I'd like to try, but I haven't done it. Um, just some future research and something encouraging. Just this is some heritability uh, from the photosynthetic traits that we have got from the observed data. And some of them look pretty good, so I'm feeling happy about that. If we can measure more and get more data, probably the heritability can increase and be useful uh, in the future. 
Uh, also, I'm happy um, other collaborators in um, Australia and CIMIT uh, in the International with Yield Partnership, they also found with reflectance um, some traits with higher heritability, mainly uh, booting. So it's the advantage of quicker tools that you can choose or know when is the best to measure and probably come back even with a LICOR, but uh, you know, you are more focused and you know what to do now. Um, so, yeah, in general, that's the, the tool that we are working on and, yeah, we are happy to continue developing too. So thank you and thank you all my supervisors, collaborators.